But I always say that the best thing to do is to go out of your way to find, find ways to relate to other people. And in the end, you'll feel enriched. Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, mommy millionaires and men that are listening in. I am so excited to bring you our special guest today. I have been looking forward to this for months, ever since we met in a little cafe in Newport Beach. I have looked forward to this moment to interview one amazing person, mom, wife, friend, and fellow podcaster, Kate Casey. She is a comedian author, and host of The Reality Life with Kate Casey. It's a top 50 podcast on iTunes. Every week, Kate interviews reality stars of the past and present and recaps television show episodes. She is the author of loveandknuckles.com, which is dedicated to recapping reality TV shows and highlighting the hilarious absurdities of aging, parenting, friendship, and pop culture. She is the author of you know you are pregnant when, funny quotes from when women have been there. She is also a contributing writer for the Today Show and Babbel.com. She is a featured comic for US Weekly's Fashion Police. She and her husband and four kids live in Newport Beach where I live. How cool is that? So on this episode, I really want you guys to be thinking about how this applies to your life, whether you're a fellow podcaster listening in, or maybe you sell something online. She talks a ton about connections. Okay. And so I want you guys to think in that realm because she is a master connector. So if you can borrow one thing from this episode, it would be, how does she connect so well? Another thing I want you to pay attention to while you're listening to this episode is her belief in herself is through the roof. I mean, there's no limit in the amount of belief she has. And sometimes we have to borrow that from other people. You know, like if you hang out with people that really believe in themselves, it rubs off on you. And so I want that to happen for you while you're listening to this episode, borrow a belief from her and go do something big after listening in. Okay. But before we get into today's episode, I want to remind you that mommy millionaire live tickets are still available for you. They're in October 24th through the 26th, we will be in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, where our VIP day is going to be full of a a women's empowerment photo shoot with me, where I make you laugh and you create amazing lifestyle content. Not none of those like posed photos. It's going to be super fun. And then you have a cocktail night with me where you can mingle. There's only going to be 40 people allowed at this party. That's the max. So that way we can really spend some special quality time together. And I feel like the price of the ticket should be just for one day, but we're giving you three whole days and it's going to be an amazing time where it's going to just transform your entire life. If you've been feeling like, gosh, I just don't know where those women are that are ambitious and that are going to lift me up and support me. If you've been feeling like you're lacking in that, then come to Mommy Millionaire Live because so many of the testimonies we get from this event are like, I found my lifelong friends. So if you're looking for a tribe, you're going to find it at Mommy Millionaire Live and so much more. So head over to mommymillionaire.co to grab your tickets today. Hey, Mommy Millionaires. I am so excited about today's special show with my friend, Kate Casey. And if you guys haven't heard of her, she has a top podcast that's called Reality Life with Kate Casey, where she basically goes over reality TV shows. I love listening into it just to get a good laugh because she asks the questions that everybody is thinking. And she asks it um, to different reality stars, 
or just to different people that tune in to reality shows. So it's super interesting. If you guys like reality shows, you would love listening into her podcast. You'll get a good laugh out of it. She's also a comedian. You could find her over at comedy clubs in Irvine. I've watched a couple of her videos and she is hilarious. I first met Kate through one of my friends, Anna, and it was so sweet because she was willing to go out to coffee with me and we didn't know each other. But then when we met, it was just like an instant connection I felt like. And she was so sweet. She had her baby there with her. And one of the things that I just love about Kate is that she just keeps it real. And within like 30 minutes, she totally called me out on my stuff because I was talking down about like something on my face. I can't remember. But I was like, that is the moment I fell in love with Kate Casey because I'm the person that usually calls people out. And she called me out. And so I was like, yes, I like you. And the rest is history. So I'm so excited to welcome Kate to the show today. Welcome. Thank you. First of all, it wasn't your face. You, it was something about your legs. You're like, oh, I just get down on myself about my legs. And I said, well, what would you say to your daughter about her legs? That's right. That's what it was. Okay. Yes. Yes. It was my stretch marks. That's what it was. Yep. Okay. No one cares about stretch marks. And you know what I've realized is like, especially men, men, the only people that care about stretch marks are women. And then (laughs) no other woman is looking at you like, wow, that sucks. Look at her stretch marks. (laughs) I know. My husband tells me all the time, I I can't even see your stretch marks. And I'm like, really? You can't see those? They're huge. (laughs) That means. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, Yeah. Thank you for calling me out on that. I am so excited for you to talk about your podcast and what you have going on and all the kids that you're, that you keep having that you might, you know, I know you might have some more. It's like amazing. Um, so tell us, how did you get into this world? Because people are brand new to you. How did you get into, you know, the media years ago? Well, I, 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 I got a degree in political science, and one of my first jobs out of college was representing law firms doing uh, media consulting and crisis media litigation for law firms, and I did that for about 17 years. And then I had, in the process, I had my first child, and I always loved comedy, and I, my husband's best friend said, you really need to pursue comedy because it's always, you're always going to feel like there was a big hole in your life if you don't pursue everything that that you're interested in, especially before you have kids. So before I, just before I had children, I took classes at the Groundlings while I was still the CEO of this PR firm that I started. And, and then once I had a baby, I figured out a way to write television recaps. I always loved reality television. I'm sort of like an encyclopedia for useless information about people, uh, especially celebrities. And so when I watched a reality show, it was like, I w- would get fascinated by the people that they would highlight and wonder quite often, like, what happened to that person? And what was the impact of being on TV? So I was writing TV recaps and kind of got into the media business that way, wrote a pregnancy book, started doing stuff for Us Weekly and doing stand-up comedy. And then uh, I was doing these TV recaps and in the process started to meet people that were in were involved with reality TV. And so I kind of came up with this idea that there should be a podcast that where I could go and find, track down people that have been on reality shows and ask them what the impact had been on their life. So that's kind of where the, the idea came from. So I went to the net, the head of the network, uh, Wondery Network, which is a very well-known and stat- uh, well-respected podcast network and said, okay, here's my idea for a show. I'm going to go and I'm going to interview reality stars. Maybe they're a one hit wonder. Maybe there's somebody who's been on a show for 10 seasons, but I want to ask them about the impact on their life. And I also want to go across America and interview people and ask them to watch an episode of reality show and hear what they think. And that was kind of the original idea. And so luckily this was three years, almost three years ago and podcasts were so new they were willing to take a chance on someone who had never had a podcast before. Uh, but luckily, I think that my, the fact that I had worked in media was something that was of interest to them because they knew it was like a built-in marketing PR machine. Mm. So I 
I basically, I was showing them, I already have an audience because I have this following because I write these TV recaps and I'm in all these different outlets. But I know how to pitch the media. I know how to market myself. And so I think that that was probably one of the bigger reasons that they said yes. So I did my first episode. It was my daughter's first birthday. I believe it was September 17, 2000. Um, what is that? 16. And, it, you know, it started out slow like everybody else's. And I've just, over the last nearly three years, just really cultivated um, my audience and really focused on getting fantastic featured guests. And then the featured guests, meaning the, the front end large interview, and then the other guests who are recapping shows. Traditionally, I have three segments per show. So it is like a talk show and the front end of the show is a featured interview. And then the other two interviews are with people who review shows. And over time, the featured interview has, has changed a little bit. So it, it, it isn't always me tracking down Eric Neese, who was on season one of the real world. It's now turned into people that are on current shows right now and now into unscripted film. So I do a lot of interviews with documentary directors and producers as well. I love that. I know I was just listening into the one you did with, you were talking about Southern Charm. And I am not like, I don't watch a lot of reality TV, but that I did watch the first season of Southern Charm. And I was like, oh my gosh, I loved hearing that. I don't know. I loved hearing about it. And uh, I just love the whole idea of what you did and how you brought something new to the market that wasn't out there in the podcast world. Um, But how did podcasting, like, you know, in the last three years, how has it changed your life? Well, first, let me say that I've learned in my career that I should never expect things to be handed to me. I have to make things happen. I have to create content like even with my own blog, when I did TV recaps, I could have written, I mean, could have been writing recaps for other outlets, but I always knew that I needed to own my own content. So that was the first thing. Um, and then also things don't, are not just handed to you. So you have to go out and make them happen yourself. So, you know, one of the, you know, the struggles that I've had is that I, I've always been sort of an unknown. So it's convincing somebody that somebody who is, has not been maybe on a TV show before that, uh, you know, that I could create something or I'm the best person to interview. So it did take a lot of time. I just want to be honest with people. It's a really, it's a hard, hard business to grow, grow an audience. Mm. And I think I was very fortunate that I started a, a show before other people did and the podcast network or world has sort of changed because number one, it's so, so many people podcast now. Television podcasts are actually a huge niche. And people have realized that it's almost like I would say a dessert. Like people watch shows, like even the Game of Thrones, that show mm-hmm. is so popular. There are probably like five different podcasts just about Game of Thrones. It's like niche listening. And so, um, so it's a crowded market and I was fortunate to start a show before anybody else. So there's sort of like a legacy factor to my show. Um, one of the struggles that I do have, which I kind of, I'm always wrestling with, which is probably why I'm always so like, I'm, I have to hustle all the time is that I'm competing against people who all of a sudden decide to have a podcast and they've been maybe a contestant on the bachelor. Mm. So they have this enormous audience because they've been on television for three weeks. Yeah. And so they were kicked off the bachelor and, and then they've decided I'm going to start a show called kicking it with Bobby G or whatever it is. And the people that are so invested into the bachelor at that time are like, Oh great. He's going to give me inside scoop. And so maybe people tune into maybe the first or so for one or two episodes and then they kind of trail off. But mm. um, during the week of my show, because my show is so timely, um, I'm competing against somebody who, who might have access to a bigger audience at that week because he had just been on TV. So for, to give people some like kind of a sense of like the, the market is so crowded now. And if you have something within the media media space you have to compete against people who have 
the 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 benefit of being on television. So you have to work twice as hard to really cultivate your audiences. But I think the most important thing is to have a really great content. Because a lot of people have podcasts that they're garbage. I mean, they, you know, if the sound quality is poor. Uh, I listen to a lot of interviews where people don't do the appropriate research into the person that they're interviewing, which drives me bananas. And, you know, I have the benefit of doing media consulting for 17 years. So that's part of you know, what I would do for a living is do extensive amount of research before I talk to somebody. So the professionalism is not always there when you compare your show to other shows. Mm. Um, so it's a, again, it's a very crowded market, but I have to say that the, the really good shows are few and far between. So if you're somebody who has a podcast or is thinking about a podcast, I would say find something to, to talk about something that is, that you're so passionate about that your voice jumps through whatever device someone's listening to have really great content. If you have guests, make sure that you've done a ton of research and you make them feel like and sound like the most important person that walked the earth. Mm. Because otherwise, people are going to tune out in a a hot second. Mm. It also says a lot about you as a person. If you, you know, have a guest and you don't even let them finish sentences or you're not asking them thoughtful questions, it, it says to people, well, this show is really about you and not really about the guest. So. so yeah, it's a it's a difficult place to really make a dent, but if you have a unique voice and you have a really great work ethic and you have a really like clever marketing and PR plan, you can be enormously successful. And I and I have had meetings with agencies where they've said to me, "Well, you know, you're kind of working in reverse because most people are enormously successful." And then the podcast is just sort of like a ancillary part of their their media portfolio or their persona. And I'm somebody who has really kind of become famous because of my not famous, but like well known or ish from a show. So kind mm-hmm. of working in reverse. So it's always me competing against that that I'm working yeah. in reverse. So mm-hmm. it's uh, um, it's a, it's a lot of work. That said, I'm having the time of my life. I mean, I am having so much fun. I get to watch TV, which is great. (laughs) I'm able to talk to different people, which is my jam. Like, I, there's nothing I like more than talking to different kinds of people and getting to ask really thoughtful questions and connecting with people, not just the people I interview, but the people who are listening. Um, And, you know, just to to do something that I think is really... um, Really, I don't know, just sort of, I feel like I'm on the cutting edge of something. My husband always says, you know, you have to just remember you're kind of on the cusp of something big. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you're an early adopter and it's sometimes it's hard to be an early adopter, but just, you know, to stay the course. And um, I'm really excited. And the nice thing too about it is that it's really helped me grow into different areas. Like right now I'm moving into adding to my stuff, like producing reality shows. So, you know, there's just like a, you know, there's, there's a plan to all of it, but. Totally. What do you, when you feel like, okay, you're, it's, you've worked really hard to get to this spot, but there's a lot of like mindset stuff that goes along with you being able to do what you've done, you know, because, and I talk about mindset all the time. That's really what, you know, mommy millionaire is about. It's a mindset. And for me, when I first met you and just hearing you speak and all the things that you've like, all the times you've provided value to my life, it's been about just grit. You know, you keep going no matter what. What are the things that you're telling yourself in your head? Because we all have like, you know, that person in our head that's talking to us. What is, what is your person saying in your head to keep you going? Well, I always say, I feel like the universe bitch slaps me. (laughs) So, um, You know, it could be a Monday, okay, and I have a guest that I'm really excited about and I've promoted them, which I try not to do anymore because I feel like if I promote it too much, it's like I'm just asking for that guest to to bail and then I'm in the lurch. But I might, it might be Monday and I'm really excited for an interview and then the guest might pull out the last minute and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. And so Mm -hmm. in those quiet moments of crisis, I have a choice. I can sit in the frustration 
or I can dig down deep and make it work. And in those moments, the universe always repays me with a much better guess. Oh, so I just have to make a choice whenever I get knocked down. Like not only am I going to get up, I'm going to get up and I'm going to high kick a wall. Like I'm just not going to take no for an answer. So if someone bails, I'm like, all right, well, let's get to work. Or if I've overlooked for an award, or if I'm feeling like I didn't have enough downloads for an episode, I have a choice. Am I going to sit in this? Or am I going to make things work? So I, I, usually I go right back to the, you know, to emails and just start writing people and, mm. and, and, and figuring out what shows are people watching. Like right now, there's a documentary called I Love You Now Goodbye, I think that, or Say Goodbye or something, or I oh. Love You Now Die. Where so is that at? Really that documentary. Nope. I think it's on um, Amazon maybe, but it's about oh, okay. that court case where the girl text her boyfriend it, like encouraged them to commit suicide oh so gosh people yeah people are really into it because they say that once you watch it you really hear more of the court case you know the information within the court case that that the te- between the testimony and the discovery it, it changes your perspective so now that i know people are really interested in that i'm like all right i'm gonna make this happen i, I i'm like i'm gonna get a producer i'm gonna get a director i did that with that leaving neverland when the michael jackson Ooh, came out yeah. and everyone was talking about it i was like listen uh, listen if on paper you're gonna go all right the director lives in london it's an hbo production it is a highly um uh, salacious topic are they going to want to inter- do an interview with Reality Life with Kate Casey? I'm like, yes. yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are going to. So I just like, I start hustling. I, I figure out every single person that has some sort of connection. And then I go back to my PR days and I, and I make a case for myself in the same way that I made a case for a reporter, trying to get them to interview an attorney with the hopes that, you know, my white collar crime attorney who might have a small practice can be quoted by the reporter from the New York Times that's covering the Martha Stewart case and they'll get quoted and then they're on the front page of that paper and then people are like, wow, that attorney is a big deal when in fact they're just you know growing their practice. So I go back to those, those roots of mm. that, that hustle and convincing people um, that they should do an interview. It's just this time they're doing the interview with me. So I got to interview Dan Reed, who's director of Leaving Neverland. And I, I think I was one of maybe one other podcast that branded an interview. And, and so something I'm really proud of is that I, I think that I really do a great job of making my guests feel like I am, you know, I'm really invested in them and I want to highlight them. And sometimes if it's a reality star, it's like, I want to make you look beyond a one dimensional character on a TV show. You mm-hmm. look, you know, like a jerk on TV and let's, let's learn more about who you are, where you come from and the life experiences that you've had so that people can connect with you. And then we'll see you as a three dimensional person. Like I'm in this to help you as well. Let me help you tell your story. So I'm proud of that, and I'm, I'm really proud that over three years, I've done some really great interviews with all aspects of reality TV. So it's like, it's not just somebody who was, a, you know, plucked from obscurity to be a real housewife, but it could be somebody who created American Ninja Warrior and how they came up with that show idea and the, the pitfalls that come with filming that show. Or I had Phil Kogan, who is the host of Amazing Race, and to find out how much time he's filming every year and the challenges that come with filming a show that's filmed all over the world or somebody who like Norman Corpy, who was on the first season of the real world, he was the first person to be out as a gay person, a gay man on television and how he received letters for years and people still stop him and say, I had the courage to come out because of your bravery on television. And so uh, those are the connections that I'm proud of. I had this guest, um, two weeks ago, who was on the real world Los Angeles. Well, it was like 25 years ago. And he's this guy that's from Owensboro, Kentucky. And he was cast because he was this aspiring country music star. And then they come to realize once he gets south that he's really, really religious. And so one of his roommates was Tammy Roman, who is this black woman from 
New York City. And in the course of filming the show, she tells her roommates that she's pregnant and she's decided to have an abortion. Can you imagine what this was like 25 years ago on television? Oh my gosh. And so yeah. he explains in the process of the interview that people had expected him and the producers on camera said, you know, Tammy has, is going to make this decision. What do you think about it? And they had expected him to say, well, my faith tells me, you know, this is a horrible decision and how could she, blah, blah. But what he said was, while cameras ruled, they were surprised that I said, well, because of my faith, I love all people and she's my friend. And I might not always agree with the decision she makes, but that's my friend and I love and I support her. So no matter what she does, I'm going to be here for her and I love her. And, and so he's explaining that and it was a really special moment on television. And it could have really been a divisive moment. And it, instead, it was this really powerful moment about what the television show had set out to do, which was to take seven people from all walks of life and to put them in a home and to see how they react when they live together. And it taught people that despite the differences that we might have on paper, that we really have more in common than we think. And that, that period of time, which is between, you know, 20 and 24, which is such an important time when you strip away your parents' ideology and you begin to become the person that you are to be, and you're meeting new people and you're figuring out who you are, that you can come together and learn so much about each other and to become less defensive and more open-hearted. And so he's explaining this to me two weeks ago, and I'm on the other end of the line and I'm crying and I'm just mm. like... This is what I love about TV. People are like, oh, you know, Jersey Shore is crap. But it's not because I interviewed Mike the Situation Sorrentino and this was after he had filmed the show years ago and he said, I have to be honest with you. It was not a great moment in my life. I was on pills. I was totally self-consumed. And what an idiot was I having my brother take care of my taxes. And now I'm going to go to jail for a period of time. But I'm happy to say that I've had this life experience that not many people have. But because of it, I have people who walk up to me every day and say, you were so entertaining, but I really connected with you because I have an addiction issue. And it keeps me on course. And I'm really grateful for the experience and the people that I've met. And I feel like I'm, you know, I'm grateful beyond measure. Hmm. So I'm really grateful for the people that I meet, the connections that I have, and the way that I feel like I can help us uplift the conversation to beyond, I don't have time to watch a TV show because I'm so busy in my life. If we could flip the script and say, you know, I did spend 45 minutes of my extra time uh, this week and I watched the show and I didn't totally relate to that person, but it made me laugh or I did relate to that person and it made me rethink this decision I've made in my life, whatever it is, right? Like some sort of escape and it's enjoyable and it's a way for us to connect. I know this for certain. If you don't watch reality shows, you know, you can still talk about reality shows. So if oh you go gosh, somewhere, yeah. <laughs> anywhere in the country and you say, what do you think about Real Housewives? Somebody has an opinion. And yeah. then you can talk about it. And and that's a great way. It's a, it's a conversation starter. I love that. And I mean, just like I, we went on a double date the other night with a couple that we barely knew. And TV actually is what connected us because we were talking about, oh, like, and we got to know each other's personalities, which it was really cool. I feel like I love, I do love TV. I'm just not like, the other day I actually watched an episode of Real Housewives just because, anyways, long story. But I watched an episode of season 13 and I was like, this is the dumbest show I've ever seen in my life. And me and my husband had like an hour long conversation about why it was the stupidest show on earth. And, um, it was of the OC because everybody always messages me and says, you need to go on the housewives. And so I was like, I'm going to watch one of the episodes. And I was like, oh my God. Um, anyways, but yeah, I think it's interesting because it does, it just like makes you laugh. It, you know, starts a conversation and you know, you're changing the world in your own way and you're making people laugh and you're bringing people together for connection, which is what I love, love, love about what you're doing. And, um, I mean, you guys could probably already see, you want to go and download all the podcast episodes that she's done and learn from these people, you know? So, um, when, when you're talking about, I mean, you've reached out to some amazing people and it, 
you know, you've gotten them on your podcast. What would be your top tips for people listening in right now that maybe they have a podcast or maybe they have a blog, they want to interview somebody, or maybe they have a YouTube show, you know, they want to interview people. And what would be your top tips for reaching out to those people and getting them to come on their show? That's a great question. Um, The number one thing is it never hurts to ask. You're never going to know if you don't ask. So I like I I want Bethany Frankel on my show. I want Sharon Osbourne on my show. I want Julie Chen. Like there are lots of people, and it's like I'm just gonna. I have to start with the mindset. Like they're gonna go on my show. They're gonna be on my show. I just have to figure out how to get them. So that's just the start. Now you when you approach them, you got to do your research. You can't just write. Like I get asked to do lots of people shows, and I immediately delete it if there's spelling errors, the formatting's off. They don't really seem to know the title of my show. They don't really seem to get what I even I do. What I do, like I'm not going to waste the time that I don't have to be on someone's show when they didn't do all of the you know the, the work before I even did the interview. So it has to be professional, and the, and you have to make somebody feel like they're the most interesting person in the world. This is what I did when I would contact an attorney. You know, years ago, I'd say. I read your article on September 6th about the impact of blah, 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 legislation. I would love to put you in touch with Joe Schmo because Joe is the leading expert on toxic torts. And I know that in your follow-up article, you probably gonna, will want to cover this aspect of the legislation. You know, you got it. You have to be helping somebody, giving them something that they need, but also be sound professional. Hmm. So if you're going to go after a guest, you need to say, I want to hear somebody say, Kate, I have to. Um, I have to tell you. I can't tell you how much I enjoy your show. I really appreciate the work that you got. In, you, you have put into it. Um, I've been listening since episode number, you know, one twenty one when you interviewed Mark Cronin, the director or the producer of The Real Life. I really appreciated when you asked him blah blah blah. Mm. I would love to have you on my show, which is about. Da, 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 da. And I know you would be a perfect guest because da 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 da. Mm. You can't just expect you can write an email to someone and say, "Hey, can you come on my show?" No, you have to make someone understand why they're going to spend the time that they have, like the small amount of time that they have, and how it's beneficial to them, and you know, and a good fit for them and a good fit for you. So if I, if somebody has a show, a podcast about, you know the most famous soccer players in the world, there's got to be some reason that I, they want me to be on. They have to maybe explain it to me because maybe I don't totally see it at first. Mm. Sometimes with guests, I'll say, you know, I'd love to have you on the show because I watched your documentary, I don't know, Finding Vivian Mayer. And I, I found it so touching. And I'd love to have you on my show because my audience really loves documentaries. It's been my experience. People who love reality shows also love documentary film, unscripted film, because it really opens our eyes to people that are that live beyond our own neighborhoods. And you did a spectacular job telling the story of da 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 da. So you really have to sound like you spent some time on that email. Um, I also found that sometimes you have to be clever. So you might have to go, you know, DM an Instagram, go to their Twitter account and send them an email. But go to LinkedIn, find out who you have in common. It's much more it's much more convincing for someone to go on your show if you can say, um, it sounds like you or Mark McConnell and I uh, we have a mutual friend in, in you know in common. Mark McConnell and I have known each other for six years. He has said that you are the best person at da 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 da. I would love to have you on my show because do the work, sound professional, also follow through. If you're going to say, I'll check back with you in two days, you better check back in two days. You don't check back in two days, they're going to write you off. I think like what it sounds like is there's so many people that are in the podcasting world that don't treat it like a business. And right. And so it's like, you can tell the amateurs from the professionals. And um, I don't know if you get this ever, but I mean, I get so many people that pitch me on the daily to come on my show. and. I'll, I mean, even in my DMs and then I'll go see and I'm like, they're not even following me and they're asking to come on my show. I'm like, that's like the rudest thing in the world. Like, are you serious right now? <laughs> well, a lot too. Yeah. Or, or 
Um, I, I'm going to be, I be great on your show because I'm really funny or this bothers me too. Like I have a really great Facebook page, really great. And I, I do stuff all the time, encouraging my listeners to come on my show. So I'll say, I'm looking for somebody who can talk about, I don't know, teen mom OG. And so the person that I want to have is the person that responds, Kate, you've got to have me on. I've been watching the show since season two. I get so fired up when I see stories about Caitlin and Tyler because I totally relate to the story because I was placed for adoption, whatever, whatever. What I think is, yeah, fine, I guess I'll do it. Okay, you're not doing me any favors. Why would I ever have you on my show? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, oh, thank you. Thank you for your, I, I know you're putting yourself out. It's like, do you, have any idea how great experience it is to be on someone's show? Even if somebody has a podcast called, you know, I Love Frogs, I'm grateful that they've even just reached out. I don't, it might not be a good fit for me, but, you know, at least they went, went out of their way to ask me. Right, right. <laughs> it's a privilege. Oh my gosh. People are hilarious. How, so how do you handle those people? Do you just not respond? Because I, I just don't even respond. I'm like, no, I can't. But maybe that's the wrong thing to do. I think it's kind of, it depends on the day. <laughs> I'm in an okay on mood. I'll just say, I really appreciate your kind note. However, I don't know if it's a great fit. However, you know, who would be a great fit that, you know, is usually the way I try to handle it. But if, you know, you get me on a wrong day and you have an email that has horrible grammar and then there's no format to it. And then you call my show the wrong name. Like, no, you're probably going to get a back you know, a different email. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So I have another question for you. Um, do you think that all press is good press? It's a difficult question. I think it, uh, I think it's about managing your responses. Mm. So sometimes even in the moments when somebody has bad press, you can still handle it in a way that can surprisingly work in your favor. Like I was actually coaching a real housewife this morning on answering questions to the media. And, you know, uh, in this particular case, she does not get along with this other woman. And one of my bits of advice is always like, you don't always have to answer the question that you've been asked, but you can answer the question that you would prefer to be asked. Ooh, that's so good. in other words, if someone asks, what was it, you know, what was it like for you? considering this woman hates you. She thinks that you're garbage, you know, something like that. And it's about how you respond. So it could be bad press if you say, yeah, she was horrible to me. Uh, I never felt so weak in my life. Well, that's a shitty way to respond and that's going to be bad press. But it's about your response. So if you said, you know, I went into this experience open-minded and I knew that I may not click immediately with some people, but I always say that the best thing to do is to go out of your way to find, find ways to relate to other people. And in the end, you'll feel enriched. Something like that. Because then, you know... She looks like a winner. A, yeah. You look like a winner and they look like they're diabolical. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily say good press. You know, bad press is, is always good. I would just say it's, all, it's about your responses. And I mean, okay. and that and goes along thing with. I would say, oh. I, was, I was also going to just say that, you know, when it, I hate it when people try to compare podcasters because it's just you can't do it. <laughs> and there's and there's always room to grow the market. I'm such a proponent of, of supporting other podcasters because I know how hard it is to to create a show. So I hate it when someone says, "Well, would you know what do you think of their show? Isn't it crap or something like that?" It's just like. It's about your response. It's about, you know, I support all podcasters. I know how hard it is. And I think there's plenty of room in the market for everyone. And I encourage you to listen to as many podcasts as you can or something like that. You know, it just, mm -hmm. it just doesn't take a lot to just respond in kind. I love that. I mean, that goes along with anything in life. It's all about how you respond you know, so if you're in a sucky situation, if you just take a deep breath and you're like, okay, let me think, what is the, what is the highest version of myself? How do they respond to this question or this situation that I'm in? Um, so I love that you just did that because I think so many people, they get 
reactive and defensive when being asked a question that could potentially make them look bad or whatever, or a situation that is challenging them. And I love that. So it's just a good reminder for all of you mommy millionaires listening in right now to just take a deep breath and always think um, first before you respond and think about, okay, how is this going to help me if I answer in a bad way? You know what I mean? So I love that. Also, if a lot of people are, you know, that are a lot of people that are listening have children. So you take a deep breath and you try to think in those quick, quick seconds, how do I want my children to listen back to this quote? Mm. Because they will read it back and this is a life lesson for them. Yep. And they might be, it might be when they're eight, it might be when they're 18, it might be when they're 36 and they might say, now why in the world did you react that way? You set the tone for your family and for your kids in, in the responses that you have. So you can say to them later, you know, I was in a really difficult predicament, but I took a deep breath and I thought to myself, this too shall pass. This is a short, this is a short term problem. And I answered this way. So I try to think of that all the time. Like, okay, how are my kids going to read back to this? Like, what are they Mm going to learn from it? Mm -hmm. I know it's it's a lot to process in a quick, you know, couple seconds, but if you start putting that to practice, you'll find it becomes easier and easier. I love those four words. This too shall pass because everything that you're in is temporary, whether it's, you know, success that you're feeling right now or a moment of failure, it's temporary. Everything is. So a lot of, a lot of the decisions that I make in life, I always try to think of in five, five, five. How is this decision going to impact me in five minutes, five days, five hours, five weeks, five months, five years. And Mm. so sometimes in the five minutes, I might feel a lot of relief. I yell back at somebody, I punch a wall, I kick a door, whatever it is. But how am I going to feel about that in five hours, five days, five weeks from now? And mm-hmm. so you try to measure those, measure it in five and it, you'd be surprised how it changes your, your decision-making process. Yeah, I love that. It's just you're changing your perspective. It's like you're getting a bird's eye view of how this is going to affect you years from now. I love that. So... What would you say to any person out there that is looking to grow their celebrity? Okay, I'll call it. Um, Because a lot of people want to grow their audience. What would be your number one tip for them? Have a unique voice. Be authentic, but be unique. Mm -hmm. So if you you know, don't mirror yourself after someone else's career. You need to walk in your own shoes. Be yourself. Be unique. I'd also say collaboration is key, specifically in podcasting. You must collaborate. It's your only way to grow your audience. Other platforms, it's really difficult. Like I, anybody, ask anybody in podcasting, when you post on your Instagram about a podcast episode, does it, do you have a high engagement? Everyone will tell you no. It's just platform to platform. It like doesn't always translate. So you have to collaborate with other podcasters because you already have a built-in audience. They already understand the platform. They're already in active listeners. Mm-hmm. So collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And then I would say you really have to cultivate your audiences. Um, so if you want to grow your, 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 you know, your, let's say it's podcasting or Instagram, or whatever, you really have to cultivate your audience. So if it's Instagram, I don't know, you've got an Instagram business, you have to engage with them. You have to give them an incentive to to engage with you, connect with you, and then they'll feel more onus in like spreading the word about you. They're going to mm-hmm. tell people about you if they feel like they're connected to you. Does that make sense? Uh, totally. I mean, it's just like they can't feel like they're just a number to you. That's why they, usually... They can't. Yeah. And I think you've done a great job in your Facebook group of, you know, really getting that community to feel like they've, they're heard by you and that, you know, you, they feel like you understand them. And one of the things that I've done is I, every time somebody shouts out my podcast, I always send them a voice message just saying, thank you so much and ask them how they're doing. And it takes a little bit of like extra time to do that, obviously, especially as your podcast grows. But I think those are, that's like the one way to show people like, Hey, I, it really matters to me. Like 
that you specifically listened in today and that you shared this, like it means the world to me. Um, because you could talk with words, you know, and say that on your actual podcast, but unless you're showing them in real life that you care about them, you know, they probably won't do it again and they might tune out. So I love that you, that you talk about cultivating the audience. Cause I think even if it's an audience of five, though, treat those five people like, they are everything because they really are. That's how you grow to five to 10 to, you know, thousands. So great advice. I also say like you, uh, comparison is the thief of joy. So you can't look at someone else's numbers and beat yourself up because they all started from, you know, podcast one, two. Mm -hmm. And so you're different than another person. And you're going to be surprised in the day. This is like going back to the universe bitch slapping you. It's, there are going to be days where you're like, I don't know, you're going to be just like walking down the street thinking, God, and this always happens to me. In the moments when I think, am I connecting with people? I, I swear, in like within like half hour, someone will stop me and say, I just listened to the last episode or I don't want to bother you or something. And I, I feel like that's a sign to like keep going up the hill. Oh, I love that. Like, just like, keep, keep, keep going. I'm, listen, there's nobody harder on themselves than myself. Mm -hmm. Nobody. And, you know, I think that it's okay to be hard on yourself if you're also channeling that energy into making a really good show. But if you're going to be hard on yourself and just complain and stare at a wall and kick it, it does no good. So channel that frustration and that worry and that anxiety and having really great content. How does your husband deal with you being so hard on yourself? Um, well, he's the same. <laughs> okay. So um, I think we're, we're, you know, we're, we're different in a many ways or alike in many ways. I do have to say that it is manifesting now in a weird way. My son is, I, he's almost eight and he is very hard on myself. So I think it's like a mirror moment. Mm. And that's helping me a little bit because I see how difficult he is, how hard it is on himself. And, um, and and the way I explain myself, it's much like when you and I were at that cafe and you were talking about, you know, stretch marks. And sometimes you need a mirror moment where somebody goes, uh, ding dong, what are you doing? I'm having that right now with my son. Aww. So it is, it is, that's helping me a little bit. But, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing to be hard on yourself because that means that you're always working towards excellence. I'm just not somebody who will ever just say, like I, I hit it. I've done it. I, right. I, I hit the apex. I've done my work. I, you know, I, I think that there's always room for growth and, you know, evolving. I think that there's a fine line between self-hate, right? And being hard on yourself, having high expectations. And I think that if you have high expectations of yourself, plus you practice self-love on the regular, like, you know, saying, I love you. I love you, Kate, no matter what, but like, you need to step up your game. I think that that's like super powerful place to be. And I think a lot of people cross the line over to self-hate instead of, and they just need to make like a two degree shift back to loving themselves and then having the high standards. I think that my mantra pretty much is like, I don't think so. Of course, I usually add an expletive word in there, but it's like anything that comes my way, you know, you can't have this guest because you don't work for, you know, Good Morning America. My response mm -hmm. is like, I don't think so. You need to be on my show. Like, you're a dumbass. You need, <laughs> like, do you understand the guests that I've had? Do you understand what I do? Like, no, 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 I don't think so. So, <laughs> Once I hit a hurdle, that's my response. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> I love it. I don't think so. Okay. So last question. What would you say is your most shameless moment in your whole entire career of what you've done to build the Kate Casey brand? Shameless. Like, explain that a little bit more. Okay. So I ask everybody this. Uh, so like for me, when I was first building my online business, the, my most shameless moment, like, so like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't give two rips. Like who's watching me right now? Like I am doing this. I went to a mall in San Diego and literally walked around and found people that were filling out applications. And I told them I was hiring, um, instead. And I got their email. I sent them, I made up an application 
and and qualified these people to work with me in my network marketing business. <laughs> I that was like really shameless because I was just like, I don't really care. Like I'm just gonna walk up to anybody who's filling out an application. And I still to this day can't believe I did that. Just it's just like wow. But it helped me build my business. <laughs> well, I do sometimes like yesterday it was the park and I was thinking about the moments when I just had a blog. I mean, this is when people had blogs, people aren't on blogs anymore. But the blog where I would recap shows in the beginning, the very beginning, I would, you know, I didn't have a marketing team. It was just me. So not that I have a marketing team now, but like uh, I didn't have a team. So I would go to the park and I would just like strike up conversations with people and figure out a way in the conversation to, to tell them that I had a blog. And so I was thinking about yesterday, like, oh my God, remember when I would just be at the park and say, oh, you like um, watching Real Housewives? You should read my blog. And so I guess the lesson is don't be ashamed of, you know, tooting your own horn because if people can't just miraculously find you, you have to take them to the water. I don't feel like I think, I think a lot of people feel a lot of shame and embarrassment. Even sometimes with my guests, this drives me bonkers. It's like I could have a celebrity who does this great interview with me and surprisingly they don't repost it. And it's like, you're shameless in the way that you'll do a selfie, but you won't pr- promote an episode where you talk about yourself for 20 minutes. For some reason, sometimes it's easier for a person to post a picture of themselves than it is for them to promote an episode where they felt like they were most vulnerable telling their personal story. Mm. So my message to people is don't be embarrassed to toot your own horn or to tell your story. I love that. All right, you guys. Uh, so Kate has this awesome new platform where exclusive people get to listen to special episodes just from her. And it's on this awesome platform. So can you tell them a little bit more about it, Kate? So that way we could plug people into it and they could learn more about you. So a lot of YouTubers and podcasters are now doing it. It's called Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And it's a page that I have, which is... I have an episode that comes out every Friday of my regular podcast. And these are bonus episodes. So it's even more content. And I had a lot of people that said, would say, well, I've just got a crazy you know, personal life story. And so people have asked me in the past, like, can you tell more stories about like how you didn't meet your dad till you were 32 and your, you know, why you were sent to boarding school and all of that. So it's a spot where I can tell all the other extra stuff that isn't, isn't necessary. It doesn't necessarily fit into the parameters of my typical Friday episode. So you can join the page and you get access to all these extra episodes. And so you go to patreon.com slash Kate Casey, and then you can find my episode wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, it's easy to find. And I encourage you to leave a five-star review if you have the time um, uh, and subscribe to the show. And then you can find me on Twitter at, at Kate Casey. I tweet during shows and about shows all week long. And that shows, documentaries, etc. And I'm a great person to reach out to on Twitter if you're looking for other podcasts to listen to because I've interviewed so many people from different genres of podcasts. I can kind of, you know, send you in the right direction. My Facebook page is uh, Reality Life with Kate Casey. We've got a great community of people. So if you're at home and you're like, I'm watching The Bachelorette and I, you know, I want to smack my head against the table. Are there other people that are, are like so fired up the way I am? Yes, they are. And we also have a great group because we'll tell you what great shows are on each week. So join that. And my Instagram is at Kate Casey CA. You can kind of see behind my life. I have five children under 10. So it's a little bit bananas, but. And you can also see who my upcoming guests are. And this week, my guest is, like, for example, Captain Sandy of Below Deck. Okay. So, you guys, we will link up all of this to the show notes. You guys can check out Kate. I will be promoting this like crazy on my um, social media channels as well. And if you guys loved what you learned from Kate today, I, she dropped so many great golden nuggets. I want you guys to take a screenshot of this podcast episode and share it out there on your social media channels, tag both me and Kate Casey on all the platforms, and maybe we'll repost you and feel free to DM us any type of questions that you have about what you learned. And I can't thank you guys enough for listening in and make sure to just to show the love to Kate and tell her how much you she means to you guys. Bye guys. 
Wow. Were you guys not blown away by all of the little nuggets Kate dropped in there? And I love how she also told so many stories about her podcast guest because what I realized while she was talking was I was like, gosh, she is so passionate about her podcast. Like no wonder it's in the top 50 on iTunes because she gives it her all. She pays attention to it. She treats her podcast like a business. And for me personally, like I haven't always treated my podcast like a business. I've treated it as part of my business. And that was one thing I took away from her was like, okay, I am treating my podcast like a full-time business now because it truly can be. And you guys, she signed with a top agency called Wanderly and she gets paid to do her podcast. And she, what's so cool about that is any of you guys could do that, right? She pitched herself and basically pitched like, Hey, if you give me a chance, I will bring the listeners. And that's exactly what she did. So she makes great money by, you know, going along with that agency. So how freaking cool is that? She doesn't have to pay for any part of her podcast that could happen for you guys. Okay. And the second thing that she said that I took massive amounts of notes on was on, um, you know, what to do to get people that you really look up to and that you're inspired by on your podcast. I want you guys to think of it this way. If there's anybody that's inspired you, maybe they're a mentor that's wrote a book or that has another podcast and you would love to interview them. I mean, a really great tip was just like making it about them. How is it a win for them and also complimenting them? So, you know, I get I get these messages all the time about how, oh my gosh, I love your podcast. I would love to be a guest. And they don't follow me. They haven't added any value into my life. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. Like, thank you for loving my podcast. But how much do you really love me if you're not even following me? Right? So really think about that because I don't, I don't, I mean, you could see Kate is a huge name and she still looks for stuff like that. So people are looking at that. And another thing that I wanted to say was just keep it simple. The more simple you keep your pitches, because imagine most people are getting hundreds of pitches a day. And so if you send them a long old huge thing, they probably won't have time to read it. But if you keep it very simple, short and sweet about how it's going to help them and their brand, that is how you're going to have the most luck. I even hate that word luck because it's really, you got to be very prepared to do this, but that's how you're going to most likely get that opportunity to happen right now. And if it doesn't happen right now, keep on trying, keep trying different angles. Okay. Never, ever, ever give up just because somebody tells, you no the first time she kept saying that she was like, I'll just find a different way. Like, of course, they're going to want to be on my podcast. Of course they would like to share my podcast. I love that. She just had that belief so much in like what she is a part of and what she's creating is truly life-changing. That's how she looks at it. And she's bringing comedy to reality television. And she knows that it's changing the world because it's letting people, you know, have a conversation starter. It's giving people a laugh throughout the day and laughing. It makes life so much better. Right. So, um, another thing that I really took away from Kate too, is that it's always mind over matter. Like when you have a will, there is a way. And so sometimes I feel like we'll get caught so caught up in the challenge or in the situation that we're in that we forget to take a bird's eye view on the situation. And sometimes when we take a couple steps back and we breathe, then we go, okay, let me handle it this way. Oh, okay. It's really not that big of a deal. You know, here's what we're going to do. So remember when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you feel like you've gotten no after no on your sales call, take a step back, take a breather. Is it really going to matter in five years? If so, how do you handle the situation in a positive way that's really going to align with the highest version of yourself. And I really hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode so much because truly it was one of my favorites to listen to because it was such a great conversation. And me and Kate are friends offline. And I just know she's exactly how she was on the podcast. That's exactly how she is in real life with a baby on her hip. And so it's just so inspiring to see other moms out there going after what they want. And if you guys are looking for a tribe like that, if you're looking like, gosh, I just want to be around people that are like me, that are going to push me to do better. You know, that one of the things that Kate told me on our first time we ever hung out, she was like, why isn't your podcast in the top 10? 
And why are you hanging out with this person? She's not that cool. And she was like really calling me out on my stuff right away. And I was like, I need to spend more time with her because she sees greatness inside of me, just like I see greatness inside of her. And I'm so thankful for her in my life. And if you feel like you don't have those people, I I really want to challenge you to come to Mommy Millionaire Live because I promise you that I attract awesome people into my world. And they're all going to be at Mommy Millionaire Live. They're all making the investment to get there. So do whatever it takes. We have people coming from all over the world, you guys, to be at this event. I cannot wait to see you in October and go out there and pitch yourself today and ask someone to be a part of your life, whether it's your podcast, your blog, or your Instagram. Collaborate with somebody, show them off, highlight them, and start seeing what happens in your world. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow Mommy Millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.